specifically dealing with fraud and how you could get screwed by going out and buying a car, whether it's private party or from your favorite auction website. Uh, and I won't mention them because I don't want them to think I'm taking shots at them, but there's a growing problem and something that I've even seen out here and a friend that has just recently had happened to them out here that we need to talk about. All right, I put my damn seatbelt on so we don't have to hear the ding throughout this video. But anyways, um, today's video is gonna be about title fraud. That's right. If you didn't know, you could go out and buy a car, private party like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, have a notary there, title is notarized, signed, everything looks good, you can take it to your next state, get it registered, and you think everything's fine, and then the repo guy is showing up at your house to take your shit. Now, what do I specifically mean by that? Well, so right now, they have a thing that's going on that in my industry we call popping a title. What's happening is people are getting their cars, they're either paid, you know, they're not ex super expensive cars. It might be eight to $10,000 cars, something like that. You know, mid-range price, uh, you know, vehicles, you know, like a you know, 2012 Jetta or something like that, right? And what they're doing is they have the title and then they apply for a duplicate title. So they still have the original title and then they list the car for sale on say Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and one of the things that I found out, and I, this does not give Carvana any passes because as a corporation as large as they are, they should friggin' check and make sure that somebody hasn't popped another title before they pay somebody with a cashier's check and give them the car. But evidently, um, Carvana was getting nailed. People were popping titles, selling their cars to Carvana, and then taking their titles and getting title loans on them. Some title loan places don't require you to have the car there. Um, or, you know, they'll they'll take the, the duplicate title before Carvana picks it up, say, the next day. And they bring it there and they get a title loan on the duplicate title. And then they sell the car to Carvana or Vroom or CarMax. or CarMax actually checks, though, um, to make sure there's no liens in the databases. Uh, now, this is 100% illegal and fraud on the customer's part or the seller's part. The sad part is you really just don't have any uh, any recourse unless you're dealing with a dealer. And, I'm, and that's not a, a thing to say, hey, you should deal with dealers only. That's not what I'm saying. I know you're going to say, well, TK, you're a wholesaler. Right. That means I don't sell to the public. So it's not like I'm saying this as a benefit to me. I'm saying it as just a general period, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's sad to see um, people getting screwed like that. And I literally just had a buddy that lives out here in Nevada that bought a car off of Facebook Marketplace, looked like it was a really good deal, was like $4,600, right, for this car. Seemed like a really good deal at 4,600 bucks. Um, he gets it, he gets out to the DMV, he actually gets his registration and everything, and he's had the car like two and a half months, and then a tow truck is showing up at his place because Title Max has a lien on the car and the loan hasn't been paid. So they tried to take the car. Luckily for him, he's in a gated community and the car is behind a gate. 
they weren't able to get the car. But now he's kind of effed. He's in a dispute, you know, with the state to be like, hey, I have a clear, I have a clean and clear title, which I don't even know how he was able to get that title. Uh, somebody at the DMV messed up, and this, these kind of errors happen. But the purpose of today's video is just be mindful on who you're buying your your vehicle from and the reason why i say that is because it's so easy right now for you to get screwed now there's a couple things you can do to protect yourself if you're buying a car from somebody private party you absolutely 100 percent should meet them at the dmv and i and i, I I know it's a pain in the ass, and I want to sell it now. It's a weekend. It's a Sunday. It's a federal holiday. I want to sell it today. Okay, cool. Uh, sorry, buddy. I mean, I got the money here for you, but if you want to link up with me tomorrow at the DMV, and if they give you any static or don't want to meet with you at the DMV, then take that as what it is. It's Even if it's not a scam, it's probably a scam. Walk away from it. I don't care what kind of deal it is. Walk the fuck away from it, because... You're going to cost yourself a ton of money, and it's not worth it. It's not worth it to you to deal with it. So that's the biggest thing, um, and that's the biggest way to protect yourself is to say, hey, uh, if you can meet me here, uh, if you can meet me at the DMV, then we can do it. Or, or some, they have, like, depending on your state, they might have private party, like, auto tag places or places that can do the, the title transfer for you. Uh, they'll be able to check to see if there's a uh, a lien on it as well. And in most states, if you get a physical title that doesn't have a lien on it in your name, on your hand, in your hand, you're probably good. Um, like I said, that's what's the issue out here in Nevada with my homeboy's car is he should have never actually got that title because that lien was already on there. But anyways so uh that was the biggest thing it was just something i saw and it was something i wanted to make you aware of um i have i've seen a, a few other people cover this in some aspects or details but not really getting into how to protect yourself from it and the biggest thing is just meet them at the dmv if they won't meet you at the dmv then just don't do it um i did that with the jaguar if you guys remember when I bought that Jaguar from that, uh, who's a service manager or whatever from Jaguar, I got it at his house. You know, I, you know, I got it that day. I paid a deposit and went, you know, to get started, get stuff done on the car. And then we met at the DMV the next day and, um, got everything done, had the title notarized and everything right there in the DMV. I knew that the title was good. I got a physical title and whatnot in my hand. And you guys know how that went, you know, we sold that car at the bar for five grand. Um, <laughs> that was crazy um but anyways with that said hopefully this will prevent you from getting screwed and, and this video helps you out in um some way shape or form and uh if it did cool awesome if you learned something today smash that thumbs up button if you run into somebody that's trying to scam you you know slap that never mind don't 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 slap it but you know what i mean uh, hopefully this video was informative to you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you haven't seen, the channel has been growing like a weed again. We're rapidly approaching 65,000 subscribers, and I am so excited. You know, um, if we can get to like 85,000 before the end of the year, I'll be ecstatic. You know, if we get to 100, shocker. But um, let's see what happens, man. Thank you guys very much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.